In defence of Tottenham Hotspur, I know we had the incident last season at White Hart Lane with the offside and the, you know, you know good system or good process and all that. Shamozzle, um, realistically, they struggled when they had a couple of injuries out. And not so much that they struggled because they didn't have players, they struggled because they didn't have adequate players. Their their squad wasn't that good. Once their first 11 was decimated, ultimately it went down to big players, players with not much skill, no confidence from the fans, etc., etc. And now Sava here on the left, big ups to Sava, Football Heritage TV, was having a chat with Alan here from Come On You Spurs, and they were disagreeing with the squads and why Angie's going to be better for it this season because he's had a year to adapt and he knows the system and he knows what to do and et cetera, et cetera, and blah, 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 blah. Sava's not having any of that. This was a very interesting watch. I watched this live for a little bit. I think it was like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Sunday morning, my time uh, this past weekend, so it was peak. But in any case... I was coming back from a gig, mind you. I wasn't up all night. I was DJing the night the, that night and then came home. So, And I was watching this. And this particular point here with the whole squads. Now, Tottenham fell apart because their squad wasn't that great last year. They, have they bought new players now? Yes. Are they good enough or are they going to be of the adequate levels to replace players? Should they get injured? We shall see. Savers of the opinion that it's not, and, and until this thing changes, Tottenham are always going to be falling short, if I've got that right. Alan, on the other hand, is saying that our squad is actually very good, and if some other teams had injuries like we did, they would fall off completely. Well, Liverpool had many injuries. We had six to eight first-team players out for a large chunk of that season, two months, three months, some players on and off. So it was a little bit hairy for us. Uh, but we got through because we had good players to come in and deputise. Now, I'm not going to talk too much over this, but let's have a quick watch here to Sava and Alan discussing the uh, the squads because Alan's going to say some madness here about Arsenal, and I'm not here to defend Arsenal or Tottenham, but just listen to what was said. Ignoring it. Everyone did, Alan. Everyone well, I did. Know, I know everyone did, but I'm talking about how we can improve, not everyone else. So... Sure. Well, if we, uh, I, I gave in my video, I gave an, uh, I gave Arsenal for example, and I'll give you some facts about how many players they had missing sure. because, and you're saying how strong and great they are. They had their whole back five, apart from their left back, fit for the whole season. Saka missed two games. Odegaard missed two games. Sure. Yeah, they twice played every single game. Yeah, if the, sure. if they if they had the injuries we had, they would not be lauded as this great, brilliant team up front. But what if they I'll tell you what, if next season they have the injuries we had, yeah, would they get the same amount of points, do you think? Yes, because they've got a better squad than us. So straight off the bat, if they lost Odegaard, for example, they'd probably put someone else in there. Now, obviously, um, Emil Rose Smith has gone to Fulham. Who would they put in place there? Would they play someone like a Havertz in that position? Would they play Rice a bit more forward and bring in someone else to play defensive line? I'm not sure. I'm not an X's and O's person. I'm no tactician. But they have a player to fit in, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Arsenal fans will claim that they don't have the squad or the depth to compete like a Man City, but they are building quite nicely. Now, in defence, if... Saliba or Gabriel got injured. Who comes in? Well, now they've got Calafiori who can come in and play. Timber is fit again, so he can play. So they're pretty covered in that position there. Kivio, not many people's favorite. Tomiyasu, again, injured on and off. But still, they have players to come in and and and, and do a job and be in that squad. Uh, up front, they can rotate between Havertz, Jesus, if they want to put somebody else up front there. I know they're looking for a striker. But realistically... Tottenham do have a better, uh, sorry, not Tottenham. Arsenal do have a better squad than Tottenham. Comparative, all things considered, I'm, I'm choosing Arsenal squad every day over Tottenham's. It's quite simple. Not really, their squad ain't that good. Not right. Okay, so Alan, we're now going into that territory. This is where I lose patience with Spurs fans. We're now going into that territory. You know when I call people delusional and then they, they say, oh, don't abuse me, right? Alan, Arsenal are very good. Whether we want to admit it or not, Arsenal are bloody good at football. They have got a really good team. They play a really nice brand. They've got the best defence in the league. Their coaches get into grips with things every single year. And now we're saying, oh, their squad isn't that 
good. What are we doing here, Alan? You're telling me they would have finished, and I'm using it as a context for Spurs. So I'm not just going sure. on about Arsenal. I'm not trying to dig them out. I'm not saying that. Sorry, I also have to say though, their manager is not doing high lines and madness like Angie's. Angie got exposed time and time again last season for his high lines, the high press, balls over the top. I mean, we've seen what happened when Chelsea dunked on them. Obviously, they had a couple of sending offs, but it wasn't great. And still, even with like nine players, they were still on the halfway line, like suicide football. It was suicide football, effectively. And um, something in my mustache. Mustache, and that is what people pointed out about Tottenham last year. Arsenal, not so much. If anything, people laughed at Arsenal for being too defensive in some games, notably that Man City away game, which I still think was a good point in the in that particular time. And should they have, or rather, should had they had won the next week and got points from the Villa game and beat them, maybe we would have been celebrating a. Premier League win for Arsenal instead of a 4 peat for Man City, but that's just me speaking. Sure. But you're telling me about Rice, Saka, uh, Saliba, Gabriel, and their team, if they lost them for three months, they, they'd have the same points they had at the end of the season. That's what you're telling me. So I'll I tell you what. Mm. Do you know what? You're picking yeah, I know you're players that you want, though. Right? Yeah, it, 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 yeah, I was about to say, I'm, like, well, I'm not sure you can account for all those players to be injured specifically. Like, okay, Van der Ven got injured, his hammies went. Romero was missing games because of red cards. Madison was injured for, what, 10, 10 match days or whatever it was, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Richarlison was in and out for his own issues. Um, Son was, uh, was playing, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think there was one other player that was injured. Uh, was it Solomon? That's is it Solomon? Is that his name? Bloody hell, I can't even remember his name. Um, kid plays out on the left. I forget his name. Anyways, um, yeah, they were in and out uh, throughout the season at, at moments there. Uh, obviously, um, who's that DM? Curtis Jones got into the tackle with him at um, at White Hard Lane. Bro, I forget his name. Um, Udogi was injured as well. He he missed the uh, end of the season because of his injury. They said, you know what, I have to get uh, do this now, and then by the time the season starts, you know, I'll, I'll recover or whatever. So certain key players, yes, but you can't sit there and say, okay, well, all four or five key players definitely going to be out. But again, even with us last season, we had many a key player out, and we still ended up finishing in a decent position. Ultimately, would have liked to have won that league had we played a little bit differently in some games, or if certain players knew how to finish and score a fucking goal like their life depended on it, maybe things would have been different, but we move. We still managed to get through. Management was good. Tottenham did. Uh, Tottenham. I can't even say Tottenham. Klopp did good, and it was a case of knowing what to do and when to do it. Andrew, on the other hand, I'm not sure the high lines and everything like that, and, and Savas right. When you're picking and choosing certain players to be missing, that that very rarely does that happen. Very, very rarely does that happen. Let, let, let's look at this. So last year, just going to put it out there, how many games did Yuri and Timber play for Arsenal? Well, one probably or two. one or none. Right, Yuri and Timber. He's never played for us. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I, that's Alan, all. you see what you're doing, though? You see what you're doing? We're picking and choosing what we want here. Urian Timber was bought for them. Quality footballer, by the way. Everyone will see it this year. Urian Timber is quality. But, of course, to our fans, bro, Urian Timber missed 36 Premier League games, right? Urian Timber. You. Let's see who else missed games for Arsenal. Last Jesus. season, hang on, Thomas Partey, last season, who's better than any of our midfielders, by the way, Thomas Partey, Missed 24 Premier League games. That's more than Benton Corp and the likes. So straight away, that's two players between them that if my maths works out, I've missed 60 Premier League games. So straight away, your your facts aren't quite right. Well, well they are. Away, because two very well, big are. players. They are, because I just named the, the players that we've missed, which but is a lot more than that they missed, by the way. A lot more. Go on. Go on. Who did we miss? Yes. We missed, well, Bentacore was out, and when he came back, he went out again. And no, I no, believe. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. No caveats. No caveats. Let's have a look. Bentancourt. All right. So, Rodrigo Bentancourt last year played. Let's have a look. Where is he? There he is. There's Rodrigo. Man came with the notepad, man. Respect that, Sava. Respect that. Man came with the notepad. He came prepared. This man came with the mission on his mind. Rodrigo Bentancourt played 23 games, 25. Oh, oh. 
tw- uh, 25. He played 26 games. Thomas Partey played 14. How many games off the bench? Mate, if you're available, you're available, Alan. If you're available, you're available. If you're not fit, you're not in the squad. You can't. You, we can't stop doing that. You can't start doing that. How many games he, did Madison miss then? Let's go, let's go for them all. How many games oh did Madison miss? James, James Madison. James Madison missed 10 games. 10. Oh, 10 games. I said 10 weeks. It wasn't... It, it, well, 10 games. Yeah, 10 match Ten match days. Yeah, it was 10 match days. Yeah, there you go. 10 match days. So our only attacking midfielder lost 10, missed 10 games, yeah? Sorry. Then, then sorry. Van der Sorry, Ben. Whoa, 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 whoa. Isn't Kulusevski an attacking midfielder? Yes. Well, he is he now, but he wing. played out on the, on the wing all season, wasn't he? That's on the manager. That's on the manager. Yeah. That's not... But still, what choice has he got? <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to take too long in this. It was an interesting conversation. Like I said, it was Sava came with the notepads and everything else like that and just, yeah, putting it to um Alan there and, and the comments are just unanimously in favor of Sava, as you can see here. I'm just reading one. Angel will be going with those tactics. Uh, that was embarrassing against the Bayern second string and kids. Uh, what else is here? Uh, how is it not Levi's fault? Who chose to lie to the Spurs fans saying the stadium wouldn't impact Spurs spending, which apparently they're one of the top 10 richest clubs in the world. So there's no reason why they shouldn't be spending money on players. And it, that's what it goes down to in the conversation you hear. Sava's whole point was, okay, it's all good and well buying 18-year-olds and whatnot and building for the future, but we need some quality players now. We need two or three quality players now to bring into the squad so we can make things happen. Not in three years' time. Let's make things happen now. But like Deji says as well, uh, Deji, shout out to Deji, my club, he says that uh, Tottenham are building to win in the, um, was it 27-28 season or 26-27 season, something like that, in a few seasons' time. So it's absolute madness. And one comment here says, more hope than facts on why Spurs will finish top three. We'd make f- we, we'd make fun of other clubs for this sort of delusion. Respect Sauer for calling the fans out. So there you have it. So I'll link this in the description down below. Check it out for yourselves. Interesting conversation. Interesting how two different sets of fans from the same club think and interact with one another when it comes to ambitions and standards being the buzzwords and all those things like that. But there you have it there. Also in the description down below, big up to Sava and Alan for joining him as well. It was um, peak on there. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.